what don't, don't write just listen what kind and what level of authority did God give man over Satan what are you allowed to do to Satan and what are you not allowed to do to Satan I hope you know that you cannot do everything listen this is why most believers don't have results the concept of the authority of the believer has jurisdictions and it has rules of engagement. Just because you have authority does not mean you say everything and the realm of the spirit respects it. There is a rule of engagement. If you do not understand this, your spiritual labor will be futile and you will never, never be able to walk in power. I give you an instance. There is nowhere in scripture where you have authority as a believer to gather all the demons on earth in one place and chain them and hinder their operations indefinitely. That provision is not given the believer. Do you know why? Because there is a level of liberty that Satan has. There is an allotment of time. His final judgment has not yet been meted out. It's in the Bible. Even the demons had this. Remember the madman in Gadara? Matthew's account when there were two madmen who came, they said, have you come to destroy us before our time they were talking to Jesus you are obedient to prophecy there is a timing to it when Jesus walked upon the earth there were things he did with Satan there were things he did with demons but there were things he did not do and Jesus came as a pattern man to help the believer to know how to exercise authority in a profitable way the number one law for exercising authority is the knowledge of jurisdiction you need to know what is the jurisdiction of my authority is someone learning tonight so for instance in scripture believers are given power over unclean spirits believers are given power against unclean spirits what does power over mean what does power against means what can I do with Satan and what can't I do with Satan? For instance, you cannot destroy Satan. It's not given to you. Of course, now, I know that especially ministries that are inclined to deliverance, they may use words like die or Satan will destroy you. Sometimes you may even hear us preachers say it. We just say it on believing that members know what we mean. Are we together now? But classically speaking, Satan, you are not the one who will destroy Satan. Are we together now? There is a judgment that will be meted out by God's divine justice. And when that happens, Satan together with all his cohorts will be judged and destroyed eternally. This is what the Bible teaches. So in the meantime, the believer, you have the authority to number one, withhold the potency of Satan from performing within your life and within a predefined jurisdiction for you for instance i can as an intercessor ward off the activities of demon spirits over abuja over nigeria we are given that liberty in christ through the ministry of prayer standing upon the authority that is in christ because remember he says all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me go with that consciousness that the jurisdiction of your authority is right from the second heavens down to the earth everywhere within that spiritual climate your authority will work another example you cannot command i know we do that you cannot command any being aside from angels in heaven to respond to you that liberty is not given to you. You cannot get up and command the four living creatures, command the 24 elders to do anything for you. Are you seeing that now? They can move, they can walk, but that is not within the jurisdiction. The authority of the believer is over spirits and the spirits are defined. Unclean spirits, angelic forces, and it is not even to command. It's to make decrees and they have been mandated to back you. They don't follow you, they follow the word of God. So it makes it look like they are obeying you. But they are not slaves. Are we together now? Yes. They are not slaves. They bring performance to the world. So they are not there to foil your lust. Angels, beat this person because I am angry. No, they are not stupid. Once it is not consistent with the will of God, they don't have an assignment to obey it. Are we together now? Is someone learning now? So the average believer does not have a thorough understanding of authority.
so you have because of this inaccurate understanding there have been many variations in terms of exercising authority there are those who believe that once you speak once satan has heard it forever and that understanding is based on the fact that okay if i declare he heard me he will never hear me again there are those who now respond to such call and say you are joking you will soon learn that you are playing and then they say this warfare is continuous it does not end what was satan allowed to do to the believer and what was he not allowed to do what is the believer allowed to do in terms of exercising authority over spirits you we want to learn authority you have to examine the life of jesus because jesus is the most accurate portrait of god in terms of exercising authority the prophets and all the people before him and after him because they were men the bible never gave a word of approval for them from god so we know that jesus came as a pattern man to reveal to the believer how to walk in authority when you notice that in casting out devils jesus never told the spirits where to go to only once that he got he granted their request because they wanted to enter swine and he did not say go he just said go every time jesus casted spirits he did not define a place for them to go and stay in fact if jesus said anything he gave us intelligence that spirits have the liberty of mobility mobility from any place back to the vessel that they came out from that when a spirit is casted out of a man is that in your bible that he goes through dry regions and not finding a place he will say let me go back to my house and if he finds it swept and clean but empty he will get seven other spirits more deadly than itself and return back so that the latter part of that man's life no wonder you can find people who receive miracles and then after a while they go back and their conditions become worse jesus gave us an explanation because i have taught you that deliverance does not end by just casting out the spirit influence when the spirit influence leaves that is step one the second phase of deliverance is that the light of god's word must come to give the person a now superior spiritual orientation and by so doing it to close that door and then the third dimension of deliverance is called the discipline of conformity where you now have the responsibility of cooperating with the word to walk in light with the things and the practices that keep satan at bay are we learning now so the average believer i can tell you in church is zealous loves god is sincere but many people may never rise to God's standard, that prophetic potential, because we have not learned properly the fundamentals of redemption. We have a head knowledge. We have a theological knowledge. We can recite what Jesus did, but an understanding of how to convert that reality to become our experience, many believers are at a loss. So we have people who command angels anyhow, I command these angels do this and that and that and sometimes you know just because we are given authority and angels minister to the saints there is a modus operandi are we together there are those who even command God and then mistakenly we use the scripture that says as touching the works of my hand command ye me those things were just error in translation you cannot command God no when I was teaching you um, let them have dominion I taught you that when people say God himself is limited until we authorize him uh, they are sincere but it's not an accurate spiritual understanding what we do is not to command God what we do is to partner with him you think partnership not authority over God are we together so I cannot command God because he made me ruler in the earth no when god limits his operation until my participation it is not because he's weak is that he has designed a system to incorporate me every time he's functioning on the earth it's not a product of weakness of weakness it is his wisdom designed to make sure that i participate in that dominion process but that if god decides to bypass me he's still just because the earth is still his own you see that now so he says, if you will not praise me, it is not the usual rule, but I can raise up stones. Literally and prophetically, I can raise up stones to praise me. Is someone learning now? 
So the average believer needs, listen, if you want to build a believer to be a person of stature, he needs to come into an understanding of what Jesus has done. When you tell somebody that while you were yet a sinner, unable to help yourself, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, that Jesus saw you, he loved you, and he came to you, not demanding that you give him his life because of the threat for hell. He loves you, and he's given you an opportunity to be a partaker of his life. And the only thing you have to do is to believe that he loved you enough and died for you, and that in saying yes to him, among the many things that happen to you is that there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son now you have been vested with life eternal alongside authority the potential to manifest the god life has now been given to you that is why the gospel is called good news hallelujah now the person can say you mean with all this my life of drinking smoking all this my life of drugs all this my life of killing and destruction jesus can love someone like me you say yes step one when you bring such a person now the danger is if that is the only theology that remains with that person there is trouble because the next assignment is to know that now you are we are not saved by good works but we are saved unto good works that when you now become a believer in christ the next thing is that you will begin to understand that there is the partnership with the word and the spirit to conform to the image of the Christ in experience. Are we together now? And then that eternal life that has been transmuted into your spirit cannot manifest just arbitrarily. It's a product of knowledge, understanding and faith. Now you are taught the ways of God. The believer now walks in the appreciation of what Jesus has done, but also rises to a point of responsibility, knowing that I need to not add to what God has done, but partner with what God has done to make it manifest. So sometimes with all due respect, we say things like, if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. Of course, I know that those who say that are very well intentioned and they are sincere. But from the lens of scripture, that is not an accurate statement. How many times have you believed what God has said and agreed with it and confessed it and it did not work? Because it takes more than that. The entire journey of obedience is beyond the realm of confession. Confession is part of the process. But obedience is predicated on understanding. Number one, you need to know the provisions that have been there. Number two, you need to know the conditions allocated for those promises to be made manifest. And then you need to obtain grace from God to walk in keeping with those.